Congressman, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. I, I wanted to talk to you because here you have Ron DeSantis out on the stump in Iowa, in New Hampshire, bragging about his time as governor, trying to sell his time in the governor's mansion as a success story. What should the rest of the nation know about what it is to have DeSantis lead the place you live? It's a disaster. Not only is it a disaster, it seems like every single day he's rolling out policies that really are fighting our everyday freedoms. We see that with the abortion six-week ban. We see that also with the immigration policies that you talk about. And really what he tries to do is strong arm the American public or Floridians to following what he wants you to do. And it really causes a tension in our state and along our business communities. Because as you see, he keeps exacerbating this fight that he has with Disney. And he's sticking to it. And what he's doing is starting to alienate, alienate some of our other businesses and people. Every time I travel, everyone tells me they're afraid to come to Florida. They feel like they won't be accepted in Florida. There are too many rules in Florida, and there's a lot of hateful people in Florida. And that's what he's been able to do in these past years. He's grown the the feel, the feeling a lot of, of hate. He's been fueling the fire amongst communities, picking cultural wars. And he hasn't really been doing everything he's to he's saying he's doing of making up Florida more free. He's actually limiting us in Florida. His playbook looks a little bit more like a dictatorship where he believes that his ideology should be assumed and embraced by everyone. And this is definitely terrible for America. It strikes me that you start with this idea of freedoms, as you said, given the fact that Ron DeSantis is championing Florida, right? This idea of Florida as a bastion of freedom while fundamentally taking freedoms away. And I guess the, the question we've all been act asking is at what point that begins to tip, which is why I was intrigued this week. There was a school board meeting and you had parents who actually defended that Florida teacher who's made national headlines because she's under state investigation, playing a Disney movie, happened to have a gay character. The Washington Post writes, quote, Remarkably, this backlash to the backlash is gaining momentum in some of the reddest parts of the country. The Raucous school board meeting in Hernando County, Florida, captured what's striking about this new phenomenon. The scene featured teachers pointedly declaring that right-wing attacks are driving them to quit, even as parents and students forcefully stood up on their behalf, demanding a halt to the hysteria. Does that comport with what you are hearing from your constituents as you travel through your district, do you think we are reaching a point where Floridians are realizing the impact that these policies are having on their lives? Yes, we're definitely here. And I think it's because it's the implementation. When we were looking at the policies being passed, I think people thought like, well, they're not going to be that bad. But it's the implementation that is starting to halt people and startle everyone, because now it's actually changing our everyday lives. When we were free to talk about our backgrounds, African-American history, who we are, um, immigration issues, we were free to talk and live as Americans. But now you see that you're being interrupted in every step of the way. Even in education, as you mentioned, in the classroom, now you have your government with his hand in your classroom telling you what you can and you cannot teach. And in fact, he's bringing in his wars into the classroom. Um, Disney is a direct war that he's in right now. So anything that you're touching that has to do with Disney, now you have the governor saying, I don't want you to do that. It's so, it's so interesting to me that a Republican governor, we used to see Republicans who believed in business, who believed in making sure we don't have big government. Now he's pretty much tooting his horn saying, I believe in big government to the point where I'm going to strong arm you to believe what I believe. And that's what's making most Floridians say, hey, this is too much now. This is extreme. And quite frankly, I think all Americans are over these extreme policies. We're over extreme MAGA Republicans. But now we have this extreme dictator DeSantis that we're kind of like over. But it's scary because if you think about it, most of the world is saying, hey, I don't want to come to Florida. If he was ever to be a president or even a Republican nominee, we would now have the international community saying, hey, I don't want to go to the United States. This president is, is dangerous. And that's what we have to make sure everybody is aware of, of what we're going through here. He will put his hand in your everyday lives, in your in your bedroom, in your doctor's office, in your schools, in your schools, in your businesses. He wants to puppeteer everyday lives for Americans and Floridians. So we have to get that narrative out now and stop him in his tracks because he would be a disaster for us. I, I want to ask you, before I let you go, President Biden, of course, signing the deal, raising our nation's debt limit into law today at the White House. I'm sure you watched as we did as that unfold. You voted for the deal. 
you were not happy with how it went down. I, I think the question, the forward-looking question now becomes how Democrats, how the nation avoids having Republicans hold the nation's economy hostage in the future. Well, we're going to have to really start talking and negotiating and making sure that our Republicans will actually step up, because it seems like the moderate Republicans are really con having concessions and allowing themselves to be led by these extreme Republicans. So that's really going to be the biggest fight that we have. And it was really disappointing that they brought us to a point where we were negotiating on our most vulnerable. We weren't negotiating, OK, whose taxes should we not cut? Because there's so many tax cuts for the rich. But we were negotiating our veterans. We were negotiating our families, our seniors, people who have paid the price and served our country for years, and it's a debt we need to repay. And so that's what was startling. So moving forward, we're looking to make sure that our Republican colleagues step up, say something, do not allow this Republican conference to be ran by these extreme MAGA Republicans and these extreme Republicans who don't care about American people. We took this job to serve the American people for families, and we have to remember that. It's not always about these talking points and being glorified for being so rigid. We need to come together and make sure we make Make it happen for the American people and families.